All right. Good morning, everyone. We have recording in progress now. This is Benjamin and my dad, Ross Martin Fink, the artist that we are exploring in this visual rep, rep, re, retrospective. That's a mouthful. And I'm going to now share my screen because I've got um, some fantastic pictures from the early days to share here. So let's do that now. Awesome. Look how lovely that is working. Fantastic. All right. So uh, last time was the first episode and we went through um, some of your first work and you recently found some more work and we're going to explore the, some of those today. All right. So these are some, um, it looks like some illustrative work. I'm going to just let you speak to them, Dad. These are, uh, it's funny, I read this book on Leonardo da Vinci. And in his career, he dug up bodies to study the anatomy. And I thought it would help my drawings. I, I think it was the gray anatomy book that I got. I, I did a of these drawings and memorized almost every bone of the body. At 14, I could have become a medical doctor. <laughs> anyway, yeah, a lot of studies. That's what these drawings are. And that was, uh, could have been 14. I was, uh, I remember I was working, delivering alcohol on my bike for this uh, liquor store. And you the have time. these, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, I do have these. Any photographs you see, I still have. Oh, wow. It's the one, it's the one you don't see. <laughs> Yeah, that I don't, which is a slew, actually. You said you were I delivering was, milk? A booze, beer, mostly beer. Wow. On your bicycle? Yeah. They wouldn't let anyone, they wouldn't let kids do that now. Well, at the time, uh, the chain broke and something else broke on the bike and I was supposed to pay for them. <laughs> which caused more than three times what they were paying, which was ridiculous. Anyway, another job, a million of them, but survival. And this was just a design that I made at the time, phonograph for racing. I did go to the trot trotters one time with somebody that, uh, Loved this one horse and tried and couldn't wait to bet on him. We actually won in on every race, but we're playing favorites, so you don't win much. The odds weren't that big. So at the end, the odds were pretty big on this, surprisingly, more bigger than you soon. He said they're going to win, and so we bet everything we had and lost it all. <laughs> Not that there was much. I never, these were the days we were there. Well, never mind. Anyway, that's what it was part of that life at the time. And this was a company I worked for uh, that I, for entertainment, I made these cartoons. I did them pretty fast so nobody complained. And I guess serious meat, the grocery that this particular brochure was made for it. We seemed to do a lot for this serious meat company at the time where that was their big contract at the printer that I worked for, that one printer. It's a strange job. It's paste up and a little bit of hand leather, and it uh, wasn't very uh, entertaining. It was a kind of job, well, a lot of those jobs that you watch the clock <laughs> instead of what your hands are doing. Anyway, and that, this is uh, how I entertain myself. And uh, I have a friend out there, Linda, who now lives in Canada. Who was also part of uh, this time period that she also did this kind of work. Uh, she'll recognize it. I might send these to you. It'd be fun. <laughs> this, was, this is over 60 years ago, 50 years ago. I can see some of the glue from a missing frame. That's kind of neat on this piece. <laughs> Could have been editing. Anyway, it was fun, but yeah. uh, I just did it like everything, went out, that's it. 
that was my career in cartooning. Although I liked drawings, and this was my style that I liked very much. So yeah. it seemed to go to. Anyway, that's that. Dad, if you can try and practice speaking more clearly, maybe oh, more, sorry, you know, sorry. enunciating a little better, that would really help. Thanks, Ben. Yep. Okay, I'll, I will do that. Great, great. Well, I'll try. And uh, this is also when I was 14, just dog on the left, part of a class assignment, I think. And the one on the right, I'm not sure who that is. It's one of my friends is down a little bit way back. It could have been, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to check to see <laughs> if I could find that. Yet. And uh, I did a lot of hands. I was uh, actually with my period of uh, Michelangelo and Norma Rockwell. <laughs> and uh, it's true all the time. And these are my hands. But I was working towards, uh, I think I showed it in the last, or you showed it with the Coke bottle. Yeah. That I never sent to him, but I worked on it. Yeah. But then I did a lot of things I never sent out. I guess in the doing was the satisfaction. And that's it. But, uh, whether studying Gray's Anatomy or any anatomy helped me with anatomy, I don't know. It probably constantly drawing is feeling uh, you become an athlete. You see yeah. the space and yeah. you adjust. And hopefully you get the feeling. And another one from the old days, Jasmine, and there's more of a description where I'm working on the coke. Thing. Oh, yeah. hand the, the bubble. yeah that's really fun this is one of your first musicians you've done a lot of musicians oh yeah this is before uh, uh i was going to bars drawing uh, musicians and people say that again uh it's going oh i'm sorry i I'm trying to remember things at the same time I'm trying to project. It's hard to project. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take a little time, but this is a long time ago. And uh, it's kind of nice to bring back the memory, but uh, at the same time, uh, I'm trying to remember the incidents around the time. And it's very, uh, I guess I was. Uh, a freshman, the jazz man looks like I was a freshman or sophomore. I'm not sure. It might have even been later. I don't, I don't know about that one too much. And uh, like I explained on the right, uh, working out the samples for the Coke uh, ad that I never sent, which who knows? But anyway, uh, I made my own projects. <laughs> which um, that's it. Yeah, it's, hey, that was one of your first entrepreneurial activities, you know, to proactively do that and then, and then perhaps send it. That's pretty cool. I like that you were taking that oh, risk. Well, you got a real early one there on the right. That's part of when I used to do uh, pictures on the blackboards for Christmas time. Easter and uh, Thanksgiving, I did the bird a million times. <laughs> Santa Claus and the uh, bird. When I drew on the blackboards and grandma's growing ice cream. You did that and for the teacher's classrooms? Pardon? You did that for the Thank teacher's you. classrooms? For the teacher's, oh yeah, on the blackboards, yep. chalk. Did you do any for like businesses on windows and stuff like that? All the time. Uh -huh. I spent uh, Christmas time, time when I was a kid that I actually had some bucks in my pocket from going around painting Christmas things on the windows. In fact, I remember I was, uh, every time I did one of these windows, I had these guys, I was 
invite me to have a drink with them. Uh, and I remember this one time I got so loot, I'm walking home and I got all these dollars in my pocket. <laughs> Very unusual event. And I reached to grab some and all these dollars fell on the snow. And I, I just remember looking at these dollars in the snow. <laughs> Unfortunately, it never happened again. <laughs> or maybe fortunately. <laughs> anyway, and the one on the left that just suddenly did it that pin. Yeah. Nice. Kind of mushy, but yeah. Oh, that's great. Mushy. I like your um signature on it as well. Yeah. And uh boxing was a theme that was uh, part of Bayonne, New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, boxing. Anyway, I got into boxing in 15. The PAL opened a building where they had uh, a basketball court, pool room, play pool, uh, ping pong, and a boxing gym. And I got curious about boxing and uh, got into it. I liked the workout. And at that time, I played a lot of sports. In fact, it was none. Uh, never stopped. Played basketball from the time I was five. Went swimming at the Y, doing trick diving. It was just very uh, active physically. And what I liked about the boxing, I wasn't into boxing, but I was into the physical exercise. It was wonderful. Hitting the bags, the speed bags, skipping rope. It was kind of a artsy thing about it. And once in a while, I called to spar with these guys who are very serious about their profession of being the champion of the role. And they work hard. They live the life. And they're pretty honest and friendly. I mean, you're talking to somebody on the bench next to you, trying to beat the shit out of in the best way you can, and not to get the shit beat out of Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, yeah. And it's an interesting room. It's, it's kind of like, uh, the writer, what's his name? Uh, can't remember anyway, or a couple of writers. It actually is that kind of writer. It's a very interesting writer. The managers, the trainers, the, or the boxers, the boxers. And actually, trainers are mostly ex boxers. And uh, it was uh, a lively, fun kind of thing. And it's kind of the safest place to be, as far as that goes. <laughs> This is, they look at it, boxes, it's an art form. It's not that you want to kill anybody angry. It's, it's an art form. It's dancing. Hopefully, uh, the karma, the immediate karma doesn't happen to each other. <laughs> but it's uh, kind of nice at the time anyway. But uh I didn't spar that much, but I always sparred with pros and they always helped me out or tell me what I'm doing. At least the first guy who, when I went to Stillman Gym in New York, uh, John Mascuso was teaching that was kind of giving me, he was pretty good actually. He was very good at me. He did these dives that uh, off the board that were kind of amazing, flipping back. I never know why he did it. it was a <laughs> missed by him. Beautiful fall. He's, uh, Olympic material for sure. Anyway, he was a good athlete. He was still mostly showing me uh, how not to get hit. <laughs> he worked on the fence, which I was all for. And he turned me on to Stillman Gym. So I went in. Stillman was always in a hurry. He was a very insulting guy. <laughs> I don't think he liked Bacchus and he too much, but uh, interesting world. Yeah. Anyway, I just uh, went into the gyms whenever I was in a new city, Chicago, uh, LA, New York. I joined gyms. I had all the stuff, the wrappings for my hands, the rope, skip rope, those uh, boxing shoes. That was amazing the first time I got boxing shoes. I used to, when, when you were a kid, you got these big, heavy sneakers, you work them out. All of a sudden, I, they told me to get boxing shoes. I was able to get it. There was a seal or something. And I put them on, and it's like you could fly. <laughs> they are so light. <laughs> and 
very fortunate. You boxed for a lot of years, didn't you? I trained in boxing for a lot of years. The boxing part, I did once in two weeks, and once every three weeks, somebody would call me, whatever gym I was in, say, hey, will you box with my So yeah, okay. And I just did one or two rounds. And then I go back to hit the egg, which I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody hitting me or me, and then, uh, but anyway, it was all right. It was we. It, it's kind of like you're perfecting your skills while you're uh, taking away the others <laughs> or right. something. But at, at the same time, it's a, it's very good for uh, your balance, like basketball and coordination. But you know, Ben, you played basketball, you were actually very good. Unfortunately, you lived in places where you didn't have. I was in the city kid with always kids to play ball. It was always games. You lived in a place where it's two separate, not enough. But I enjoyed watching you play basketball. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're a phenomenal athlete, Dad. It's really I That's appreciate right. I appreciate that you gave me those genes. And also, I really appreciate the boxing um, uh, lessons that you gave me as a kid. I, I still have them with me. Good. Yeah. Do you want to show us a little, a little stance and a couple jabs? <laughs> sure. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can hit for hard. <laughs> You're super fast. People, I, people have no idea how fast boxers are you are so incredibly fast it's amazing well let me not act on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a little different at this age man. <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah. i'm comfortable with my body good good yeah at this age, which yeah. Uh, seems to be an accomplishment yeah yeah but, yeah um i think so i mean without health what have we got it's, I think help is uh, the major thing. Yeah. It is the case. You got to go through life in some kind of. Does health relate to your painting and your art in any way? You know what's interesting about what I find interesting how things overlap. Yeah. When I study uh, lettering, I, I uh, said I better learn signs. If I'm going to make a living, you know, there's an old saying that if you're going to be an artist, take a vow of poverty. Well, I already, already knew about poverty, and I, for some reason, I wasn't too concerned. I always accepted the fact. <laughs> but uh, they overlap. You study letters and you learn gravity. You study architecture, you learn gravity. A letter is like a building. They're formed in a way that the balance is absolutely beautiful. So what you learn when you learn lettering is not that you do a one stroke, but you learn the science of the letter, how wide this goes, how high up on the H you make the cross or the T and the zero or the O have to go slightly above or below the line so look even with the Doric sculpture, uh, Doric uh, letter font, which is uh, nine several. And uh, it was uh, interesting how there's always a balance and gravity plays in it. <laughs> Even yeah, letters. There's something athletic about drawing. You know, you're spacing, you're putting things in the space, you let them breathe. At least, hopefully, and creating an atmosphere or creating something. Never always sure. Maybe it's just a habit. <laughs> Coffee's good this morning. Good. Uh, well, Ben, uh, are we moving on here? Or? This is the last slide for today's um, show. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if there's anything else you want to add, now would be the time. Otherwise, we'll save the rest for next week. You sent me a bunch of new pictures. What were those pictures of? 
I think I sent you uh, when I worked in printing office. Oh, nice. Did I do that? Awesome. I can't um, be. Yeah, I'll we'll, printing outfits. I don't know what I said. All right. Well, we'll create a slideshow out of it and hopefully it'll jog your memory a little bit and we'll get some more stories. I'd like to get into the history behind a lot of these things. Me too. Like, I'd like to take you to White Plains, New York, where it's one of the first times I traveled uh, any, uh, a distance after the Army and kept travel. <laughs> Do you want to tell us about that right now? Well, uh, let's see. 17, I got out of the Army. I realized that uh, I like to travel. So I went up to see my buddy. Uh, where did I go? I went to White Plains. Pieces of timing on that. I can't remember exactly. All the exact dates are jumbled up. Anyway, I liked uh, very much that was, uh, he was my buddy in the army and went to visit and family was very fun to me. And uh, the tradition of the Italian salad where they put wine in it's kind of interesting. <laughs> instead of vinegar and oil, at least that salad family, which uh, they were very nice. And Sal is quite a good. I don't know what he's doing now. I hope he's alive again. I, he's at his parents' house. I might give him a call. I'd like to see if he's still there. Anyway, we were stationed in uh, Leesville, uh, Camp Polk, Louisiana. And we walked uh, to Leesville a lot for a uh, time. Uh, are you closing me up here, Ben? It's just getting out of hand here. Not at all. <laughs> no, I just wanted to be able to see and hear you better. Speak to that oh. green light up there again, if you can do oh, it. Oh, I forgot all about that. I'm right. I'm looking, I'm looking at you instead of the green light. If I look no at problem. People, I'm looking at people. And, this lighting, that's so and you break. were talking about Sal. I'd love to hear more about that. Uh, it was a, a friend and uh, interesting character. And uh, the last I heard, he was doing gardens up in uh, White Plains, New York. I might even call today, Salvatore Cantatore. And not many people have that name. <laughs> I like the name. <laughs> and how'd you meet this guy? In the army. Yeah, oh, gotcha. We were in Tampa and we'd take off and walk to Leesville, which was around seven miles and all through this farming area. I couldn't believe the nights out looking up at the skies where there's no big uh, buildings or lights, city lights, millions and millions of stars, unbelievable night. Loved it. This and, was uh, one of your first times out of the city. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. And what did you do? Just explore around and and then did you head back to Jersey after that? Uh, well, I got out of the army, asthma, honorable discharge, medical. I was sleeping inside on dust from all the shaking from the beds and cots. I was allergic to so I went outside and slept outside. I was more like allergic to the rig we that was all <laughs> I was kind of surprised how it was. It was so immediate. I couldn't breathe, trying to get air in your lungs. And I was surprised because I was in great shape, actually. And uh, I was for it. But anyway, I got out of the army, signed the usual thing that the army is not responsible. So they wouldn't pay. <laughs> I was afraid not to. <laughs> they would have kept me. That I was no use to them. You um were in. You told me stories about some sort of a competition with like five hundred people or something like that. A race. Oh, we had this. Uh, one of the things they did one day was this. Uh, I guess you call it bivouac. I can't. Remember. But you're running through all these things, climbing the wall, hooks and over. And I actually came in first of about five hundred people. There was all these different groups units together. 
but uh, I was in good shape. Yeah. At least in good enough shape to go for it. I trusted my next move and the movement after. And that was probably from boxing and playing basketball your whole life. Well, up till uh, 26. Then I didn't go back to the ring. Uh huh. I was married to Ray DeRosa. You were married to? I got married. I think it was 1962, let's say 44. Something like that. Anyway, they had a gym here in Dallas for um, Leavenworth. Well, I can't remember. Newton's or some kind of gym. And I saw it worked a little bit out there and then lost interest. Somehow it wasn't the same. It started to feel like work. <laughs> and besides, it was kind of exciting at the time walking down uh, the Tenderloin or the area around here, there's a lot of clubs that I liked. I used to go to this club called the Aztec where they had some great dances. You're and talking about San Francisco now. San Francisco, yeah. Yeah, so we're jumping around a little bit. I'm sorry. We were, we were still on the East Coast. And, well, uh, I'm on the West Coast for a while. Yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what we'll do is we'll close up for today because we're about at 30 minutes right now. And I'd like to keep these around that or less. And um, you can work on, on um, you know, writing down those stories that you want to and, and we'll, we'll get those. But until then, I'm looking forward to the next um, series that you sent me and we'll get together and, and do those again real soon. I love you so much, Dad. I really appreciate you doing this. Wow, I love you, man. I hope, uh, I'm glad you appreciate this. I don't know where it's going. <laughs> I'm hoping to throw in some history there that people will relate to. Me too. That's a lot, actually. Me too. You know, yeah. I guess most people I know won't relate to World War II. So talking about coupons and stuff like that, and that's the boom man. In yep. All right, we're going to sign off, Papa. I love you. Okay. Love you, Ben.